Coming up on a special Drew Desmond show, a true expert in Prescott history, the one, the only Melissa Ruffner, <laughs> Professor Melissa Ruffner, oh, well. and, and a silent film of Frontier Days in 1919. You won't want to miss it. Stay tuned. Well, thank you and welcome. Thanks so much for tuning in today. We're My gonna, pleasure. Yeah, we have Melissa Ruffner here, Professor Melissa Ruffner. Oh, please. Who is doing a class. I say that because she does classes at Yavapai College. I do. So it's definitely, we have an expert here. And you have your current class sold out, right? Well, no, uh, I just finished the Prescott history class okay. and that will be again in the spring, but coming up is my heroes have always been cowboys. Uh, hello. Yeah, that's and, right. Yeah. That's <laughs> and of course that's because my great uncle was one of the five businessmen that helped start the rodeo in 1888. Yeah. Well, we will get to that in just a bit, but first we want to have uh, our day in Prescott history. Okay. Now, Back in 1866, 155 years ago. Yeah, I wasn't here. Yeah, yet. well, yeah, a week later, maybe, <laughs> but uh, 155 years ago. I, maybe you don't remember the date, but you know you're going to find out what we're talking oh, okay, about okay. pretty soon. There was a stage stop uh, on the Prescott Hardyville, now Bullhead City Road, called yes. Mount Hope. And there was a man there named Thad. Buckman, who built for the kids there at the stage station a one-foot stone playhouse. Really? Yes. Now, that stage stop was in uh, some hostile territory, and back in 1866, that was quite meaningful. Yeah. And the holopi meant to just... The, the wallopi. Well, it's an H, but it's wallopi. Thank I have you. friends up there. Don't make me go up there and get balled out. Yeah. As I said, we have the expert here today. Anyway, uh, they came to take the stage stop out. Oh, and there wow. were seven guys there, two ducked into the stage stop. There was another young soldier behind a rock. And two of the men, the only uh, cover they could find was this one-foot stone playhouse. Wow. And... Uh, they turned the Indians away. There were about 50 to 100. And uh, that's a picture there you can see wow. of the stage Fort stop Rock. there. Oh, yeah. Fort Rock. That that was the name given to that one foot high playhouse. That's, I think that's to the left. <clears throat> Pardon me. I think that's to the left. The road is to the left as you go out towards the Wallapai Nation. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've driven by there many times. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when I was in a car and it was, you know, like now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah not, not back in horse time. But another little uh, special announcement we have is the hashtag Prescott AZ History blog has come up with a new index, which is called This Day in Prescott History. Oh. Yeah, and it has a whole listing for the whole year of days in Prescott history, like the Battle of Fort Rock and so right. forth. Right. And you can see that on the blog. It's the name of the blogs right there in the corner. Oh, I'm pointing the wrong way. Right there in the... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, thank you. It's, you it's down there. there. Yeah. Yeah, 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 right there. Right, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you. But, but Fort Rock is some distance from Prescott. It well, is in true. Yavapai County. It is in Yavapai okay. County. Yeah, okay. well, you know, in 1866, things were really spread out. Other upcoming <laughs> days in Prescott history in November... A mysterious explosion at Wilson Sawmill was thought to be murder. Oh, listen, and oh, this is a whole nother time, okay? But I found a piece of wood at the Citizen Cemetery celebrating the men who are buried there, and somebody was going to take it out of the cemetery, and I stopped him and took it to Charlotte Hall Museum. Oh, and wow. I'd really like to get that back. I even remember where 
those trees were that that marker was put. Wow. And I really would like to get Charlotte Hall to at least maybe take a picture. Well, that would be that. That's and, your and best bet. Yes. I don't think okay. they give now, up what too else much stuff. Doing? All right. Well, we're in 1903 and the 23rd, Arizona's first Carnegie Library yes. was opened in yes. Prescott. Yes. yes, that's interesting. Uh, but only men could actually take a book out of the library. Which is so ironic because it was the Women's Monday Club that was the real was, power behind yes, it. It was the Monday Club later, but absolutely. Yeah. And they, 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 uh, Julie, uh, Julia Goldwater is the one who wrote to Andrew, uh, Andrew Carnegie and said, there are no innocent amusements in the town. Yeah. So we really it. need this library. But then the fire came. That's another story. That's, yeah, yeah. That's what they did have insurance. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, on the 24th of 1909, scientist Percival Lowell of the yes. Telescope Observ up in, Observatory. Yeah, and Absolutely. Flagstaff, he came to visit Prescott. Yes. And the 27th of 1909, Joseph Mayer, yeah. the founder of Mayer, Arizona, yes. died yes. in an accidental gunshot. Yes. I helped take care of his youngest daughter. And she told me when the train finally got to mayor, they only had to be good for a much shorter period of time than when they had to bring it in by horse and, and buggy. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that's carriage. true. Absolutely. And then in um, the 30th and 1911, Buffalo Bill Cody visited the Pioneer's home when it was brand new. Yes. Visited some of the people he knew who worked on his show there. Yes. And he said it was one of the best times that he had. Well, and the Pioneer's time. home was on land that Frank Murphy had intended to build this huge mansion for his wife. But instead, and you know, there's a star on the Pioneer's home as you look up from the courthouse plaza. plaza. Yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Really, one of the reasons why Prescott got the Pioneer's home is because Frank Murphy was willing to donate Absolutely. the land. The Absolutely. estate didn't have to pay for any Absolutely. land. So they, yes. that was a big part yes. of it. There were a few guys from the North and the South, you know, during the War of Northern Aggression yes. or the Civil War, yes. uh, uh, who were fighting each other on this on the uh, patio of the Pioneer's home with their canes over who had actually won that war. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. There was a Life article years ago talking <laughs> about was, that and yes. the fights over the... They used to have boarding house servings where, you know, a big pot right, of mashed right. potatoes, but they had to skip that because I wanted that chicken leg and they'd crack each other over the head with their It was, it was for men originally. And, yes, then, right. and then it calmed down a little bit as the women were allowed to come in who were also pioneers. Yeah, and, and uh, one couple ended up getting married in the head of the pipe we don't have you know place for married couples and they just took off and eloped and said to heck with you we're getting married and they came back and they had to do well, something when about i go that. to the pioneers home maybe i'll find a new guy yeah, there's i've that. only been married a couple of times <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's right <laughs> All right. Well, let's. There are uh, some things that we want to talk to you about specifically. Uh, um, first of all, we want to talk about how the town, this town, is pronounced and why it's pronounced and why it's got its name. And we do have some uh, slides to show. Uh, and the first one I want to talk about that I have for Sam Martin, it uh, it's one marked. Uh, uh, exclamation point 2020. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. No, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry, San Martin. You're right. Yeah, that one there. Uh, that is the plaza before the, any courthouse was built on it. Oh, yes. The yeah. first courthouse was on Cortez Street. Yes. And it was the top floor of a building that was a lot of different things, but they said there was a hotel in there and there were a lot of other different things. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah. And and if you look closely, there was a baseball diamond on the plaza there too. But anyway, yeah, so I, I got a little ahead of myself. So Melissa, tell us why this town is named Prescott and pronounced Prescott. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to show you this. That's a very good picture of him, but this is also... Uh, a picture at the city hall as you walk into the city hall and the chamber is to the left and to the right mm -hmm. is this photograph of William Hickling Prescott. And um, 
I actually had to write the Charlotte Home Museum archives was getting so many requests as to how pronouncing the name uh, correctly. And um, so they made me write a letter about how I went to the William Hickman Prescott House. January 1998, my daughter was a full-time Marine at a, an Air Force base uh, working in, um, in Massachusetts. I visited the William Hickman Prescott House at 55 Beacon Street in Boston, Massachusetts to take a copy of my book, Prescott and Pictorial History, uh, for them to have. I met with Colonel Col Colonial Dames of America's president, Peggy Plimpton, and she is the source for the pronunciation of the Prescott family name. In England, Prescott meant the priest's cottage. Ah. Endicott meant mm. the end cottage as we began to stop killing each other and actually move into groups <laughs> uh, uh, some of the names were what your profession was baker miller smith and so prescott was the english the proper english pronunciation however um colonel william prescott fought Breeds Hill, not Bunker Hill, Breeds Hill. Breeds Hill. And is the grandfather of William Hickling Prescott. And he, the grandfather, was the one who decided that it should be changed to the pronunciation Prescott because they were siding with the colonists, not with England. Now, England had the biggest military force you could ever imagine. Oh, yeah, they were a superpower. A, back few, then. Yeah. a few colonial people, men and women actually, but mostly men with hoax, with, 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 with hoax, with, uh, uh, ropes, help me, with, with shovels and picks Fits and, and yeah, all that, that other stuff, thing yeah. I'm trying to say, um, had no, there was no way they were going to win that war, yeah. but you know what they did. And the people who had, who had gone with the English fled to Canada because their houses true. were being burnt down. Oh, yeah, that's So true. it is absolutely pronounced Hickling, William Hickling Prescott. Prescott. Now, yeah. here is a book, and a lot of people have said, why is there a Montezuma and a Marina, and what does that have to do with, with Prescott? Uh, that doesn't sound like anybody that was here, like Gurley and Goodwin, who... No, that's right. So, but... I found this book on my honeymoon after marrying the love of my life Aww. in the chapel in Yosemite. And we stopped in this little town and there was a thrift store. Well, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm with sorry. You on that, yeah. I need to I need to check on this. Yeah. This book had been given to this this thrift store. It had been uh, taken out of the library in 1977. And it's his book, William Hickling William Prescott's, Prescott's book. History of the Conquest of Mexico. Mexico is where the names uh, Montezuma Street and, and all of those, that was in his book. Yes. And I came back to the car and I said to my new husband, oh, my God. And he said, well, honey, you are having a good time on your honeymoon, aren't you? <laughs> well, yeah, but you can't believe what I just found. <laughs> anyway, that was so. the highlight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and I still have that book to this day. Oh, it is a treasure, cool. but it is pronounced by the family who decided to go with the colonists and against mm -hmm. England, mm -hmm. Prescott. So it's patriotic to call our town Prescott. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Don't, don't see me around and mispronounce it, I might have to have a little come to Jesus talk with you. <laughs> no, and she will too, <laughs> believe me. I, I can promise you that. All right. Now, another thing we wanted to talk about is that little piece of real estate in the center of downtown. I have had, I've talked to people <laughs> about this constantly, and it is the plaza. It is. And there's a very good reason why it's the plaza. Please tell us. Okay. Well, first of all, here's a piece of paper okay. that has it circled. And this map was done by Van Smith, who became our first sheriff of Yavapai mm -hmm. County. Um, 1864. Yeah, 1864. And William Groom, Robert Groom, who Groom Creek is yes. named after, mm -hmm. 
And the middle name, I cannot figure out because look at that. You can't hardly even no, see yeah, it. You can't but see they're it. the ones who surveyed. They were appointed to survey. Why Robert Groom? Well, Robert Groom, because he was from Trigg County, Kentucky. Yeah, maybe you can't get that. That's yeah. fine if you can't. Yeah. He was from Trigg County, Kentucky, and had learned how to survey in Trigg County. And then also surveyed the old town of San Diego. So when he came here, he okay. was natural for surveying east, west, north, south, just like our main streets go. Mm -hmm. Not like many little villages that are We're all over the, place. All over the yes. place. Yeah. And 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 so it became the plaza because it was the plaza in San Diego. It was the plaza in Tucson. Mm -hmm. Not everybody who lived in these places spoke the same language. That's right. But if a bell rang and you couldn't know at first if it was good news or bad news, but where did you go? Everyone congregated on the plaza. plaza. And anyone who wants to make sure that people understand. And besides this, fourth graders from Skyview School know it's a rectangle. Hello. Yeah, yeah, it's true. longer Definitely. on Montezuma and Cortez and shorter on Gurley and Goodwin. Yes. So uh, it's if, a rectangle. If Union Street continued to Montezuma, we would have two town squares. Oh, that's, uh, excuse me, what? Well, it doesn't, so we have a plaza. But <laughs> yeah, it's big enough to make for two oh. town squares, oh, actually. Absolutely. Yes, but, but it was specifically the plaza because then everyone who spoke every language and as mining became very popular here and, and ranching and all of those other businesses where families came in and, and were in business and Prescott was the town they went to yes. for supplies and everything, if they heard that bell, and they needed to go find out, is this good news or bad news? Yeah, yeah. is it, it a fire or everybody what? Everybody yeah. knew it was the plaza. Yes. And um, just just saying, uh, that it, I have a friend who said, who calls it the other name because she knows I'm going to correct her. I've known her since high school, oh, okay. Prescott High School. Okay. I think I know who you're talking <laughs> yes, about. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But technically, historians refer to it in the way that the map was set out, and it clearly says plaza yes and for <laughs> decades in the newspaper it's always been called plaza oh yeah. yeah yeah now personally when i write and i went along with my editor about that i capitalize plaza yeah because yeah. proper names yes. ought to be capitalized A absolutely and my yeah. editor said why are you capitalizing and i went around and this is why I go, okay okay we'll capitalize plaza <laughs> tell him to call me if, <laughs> no, if, he don't, if he won't listen to you which yeah. is which is outrageous. Of course, he should listen to you. But, but it was an important place of gathering. Oh, indeed. Yeah. And Plaza, as you pointed out, is not unique to Prescott, but it is unique to the Southwest yes. because the center locations of real estate in downtown, the Spanish word is spelled P-L-A-S-A. -A. Yes. Plaza. Yes. Plaza. And yes. so Americans started calling plaza. They kind of made the S to an A. So yes. if you were to call it square, you are Easternizing, if that's a word, a real Southwestern tradition. It's a Southwestern tradition to call that centerpiece of real estate a plaza right. from right. the Spanish word. Absolutely. So, yeah. so just to set things straight here, it is a plaza. And if you see this fine lady <laughs> and call it a square, she's got a cane over here and she's going to whack you across the head like oh, those people. You know, people I can use there. it like this or I can use it like yeah, this. Yeah, you can point it out too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Now we got a special thing. A, that we promised the silent movie from frontier days 1919 and uh it, as i said it is a silent movie this was done by the ford motor company but will it be about the rodeo because i just like to mention that my great uncle george ruffner was one of five men who helped start that rodeo and we've been a rodeo family ever since oh indeed yeah. well you'll have to stay tuned and oh watch. my gosh there look at is. this Yay. yeah way out west yeah. produced and loaned by ford Wow. And that copyright date, this is actually from 1919. I, I noticed from a newspaper article. Maybe they won't get all presented.
was here in, the, in spite of that. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. that was the fire department. They yeah, always, the horse we still races. Do, we still do that on Sunday. Yeah, there. that's Montezuma. Yep. That's Whiskey Row. Yep, yep. And you're there. And yeah. another aspect to this was it settled the dust before oh, the parade. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. In fact, this was the last year they needed to do that. The uh -huh. next year they were tearing up the streets and the year after that uh, they were paid. There's Elks Theater in the back with Bill the Elk yep. sitting atop as they're absolutely. marching down Gurley yep. Street. Absolutely. In the frontier days. The last parade. year that my great uncle George Ruffner uh, was in the parade was 1933 and he died soon after that but he loved the rodeo and his younger brother my grandfather actually um wrote many of the rules that are still used in rodeo oh, he, today. he invented that's tom mix the yeah. movie star he was the judge that year and that's why i'm able to find out All it was right. 1919 oh and here are rodeo pictures yeah, melissa yeah, yeah. well he's having a tough time with that guy yeah you know and if you notice the um the horns, they aren't cut off. The tips aren't right, cut off. I right. mean, this is genuine hard. rodeo stuff. Yeah. <laughs> hard, hard, hard. Yeah. My dad used to go out Williamson Valley Road to one of the ranches where Tom Mix was filming. And one day, Tom Mix's hat blew off and he twisted around on his Wonder Horse Tony and put it back on his head. And my father went home and tried this. He was about 11 on his bicycle and broke his collarbone. And my grandmother always bought, uh, invited Tom Mix to come to dinner when he was making movies here. He was persona non grata for quite some time until he gave my father a little pony that my dad called Mixie. Oh. And, and we have that photograph in our private uh, Ruffner family. Oh, archives. that's yep. wonderful. Yep. That's yep. wonderful. Well, one of the things we do want to talk about, and you have touched on it a little bit, but what the Ruffners mean to the world's oldest rodeo, because it, it's, you talked about George, your grand uncle founding it. Great uncle, yeah. Great, yes, sorry. Yep. That's and okay. Your great grandfather Lester, he was. Oh, he was my charm. grandfather. Oh, grandpa. I'm, I'm okay. older than I look. <laughs> I'll get it. At least I didn't call George your grandfather. Thank you. I, yeah, Thank you. I, I knew that. Thank you. But uh, Lester did a lot of the administrative yes, work and yes, so forth. Yes. Yeah, talk about this. Well, <laughs> he also married a young woman from the Chicago Conservatory of Music. Uh, who would not marry him until Arizona became a state. She would not marry him in her territory. Uh, but she went to the rodeo once. Once, yes. that's it. And and that was the year that George, this new husband with this new wife, came out because he was the arena director and the man who was all around cowboy was going to get not only an award and, and some money, but he took his shirt off, which was usually quite, brilliant in color yeah. and underneath it he had a woman's camisole and my grandmother never went to the rodeo again because she was so embarrassed that he would do that and my my father actually ran the ambulance service for sports medicine before there was ever a sports medicine oh really yeah, yeah, yeah. that was budge yes 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 and i used to sit on the back uh, the, the top of the ambulance and if dad had to hand me off to somebody there was food to eat there was a sleeping bag in somebody's pickup truck i just lived I, I he could come back next week as far as i was concerned <laughs> I, I love the rodeo oh, yeah. the rodeo actually helps uh, uh smoke eye and the rodeo were very clearly connected because they helped each other um to, uh, tex ritter married Dorothy Faye Southworth, a local girl. Mm -hmm. And 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 Tex Ritter uh, was kind of an outspoken person too. And he came to visit in town a lot. And um, so Dorothy Faye, in the very early days of the rodeo, one of the things that they did, well, no, this was for Smoke Eye. One of the things that they did was have a wagon train circle around and and men who were dressed as Indians uh, were trying to get onto the wagons. And Dorothy Fay had a a, a a a help me with this a a, pe a thing to put meat in to cook meat in. Oh, a roasting pan or well, something. Well, something like that. Okay. Yes. And and when this guy who was somebody who owned a business in Prescott 
came up and looked like an Indian. She swatted him like that and knocked him out cold. So they decided they would find another way to do that. But yeah, the rodeo has always been a hoot, always oh, been goodness. so fun. It's different every year. Every performance is different. And I, I try to go out there every single. And I suppose now is the time to mention that I'm allergic to animals. Although I raise chickens for 4-H, I love horses. I love every animal. I was just at County Fair for every day it was open. And, and you're allergic? I didn't yes, know that. And, and had to take Benadryl for a week after. But it's animals are just, I mean, and, and the, the rodeo and behind the grounds where they have some of the horses and every, it's just magnificent. It is truly Western. Yeah. Now, I read a story about, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, about George, and he was uh, involved in, you know, the roadie was going on, and all of a sudden a bull decided to charge the crowd, which yeah. maybe they had a rope. No, Maybe that, they had a rope. No, that was in Phoenix. Phoenix, okay. And he was the first person to bulldog a steer because we didn't have... Uh, walls and so forth like we do where the folks yeah to sit. protect the crowd yeah, right yeah it was just open seating mm -hmm. and he was some of the ladies had gotten up and had their parasol with them and we're gonna like this is matter but we're, you know we're gonna try to beat this animal off and George actually turned him and put him down and they were able to save the crowd save right. the crowd yeah. and he yeah. invented one of the most one of the more popular yes. rodeo yes. events right there and then out of yeah. his Sense for public safety. Yeah. I well, love he was story. sheriff of Yavapai County for five non-contiguous terms. No, no. Why? Why was it non-contiguous? I mean, did what part did prohibition play oh, in the election there was and non-election? There was prohibition. Really? When was that? Yeah, yeah not in Yavapai <laughs> County. Um, George finished a term for a man who could not finish it in 1893, okay. was right. elected in 1894, and then non-contiguous up until his death in office in 1933. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, you know, they were, we, we did things a little differently back then. I'm, tr I'm trying to think of you and mom and mom and dad and not do say anything that's going to be, you know, really, <laughs> but here's the deal. Um, there was a man who sat by the door at the palace mm -hmm. Yeah, where there's drinking going oh, on. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And and the man who couldn't read or write would be sent over to him. And he would say, well, who do you want to vote for? You want to vote for George Ruffner? I, I don't think they even asked about anybody else who was on the ballot. And and if they said, sure, then they'd put an X there. No, I think he's been in long enough. Well, then let's just X the old man out. <laughs> and so they put an X there. And... Um, you know, there were little little things like that. There was a young man who was going to run against George sometime in the teens. And the thing you did was go to the different ranches and, and places where the mining was going on in the county, because that's where the most people were. And this young man got up and took for, talked for about 45 minutes. And George got up and said, you know who I am and you know what I've done. And if you vote for that, you get what you deserve. <laughs> and they reelected him, obviously, because yeah, why that, not? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, so elections haven't changed a great deal, but yeah. you know they're they're a little better handled now. Well, you know, George may be probably one of the most famous of the Yavapai County sheriffs. I think you know if you were to ask the people name a famous Yavapai County sheriff, they i say George Ruffner first. Well, and especially if they're at the Western Heritage Center. That's true. <laughs> and I'm there at the time. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. Also at the Western Heritage Center is the new Smoke Eye exhibit yes. that you talked about. Yes. The Smoke Eyes were started the first couple of years to really raise money to yes. help keep the rodeo, keep the rodeo going. Rodeo. Yeah. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, that uh, really has a rich history. A oh. lot of businessmen. It was kind of a fraternal sort of organization, kind of elksy, one of those sort right, of deals. Right, right. And uh, yeah, there's a great history there. And really the we only place you can see it anymore. We do have a picture of Barry Goldwater. Barry Goldwater. Who was a dear friend of my dad's. And sort of off to the left is this guy in black and white paint. 
uh, Max Factor created paint that could be put on the body without hurting the body. Wow. And that person has a, a, a sheep head on and a, a G-string and moccasins. It took me three cans of Ajax to get that black and white out of my family's <laughs> out of my family's bathtub yeah. because they'd all come over to the house afterwards and you know visit and have a party and stuff. yeah absolutely so, well i can yeah. imagine that you know it was okay to paint on skin but not so good in the bathtub <laughs> area all right well well melissa it's been a pleasure and stay with us we're going to go through our upcoming events right now and let people know what's going on as far and as history up, upcoming upcoming tonight is about the early schools in Prescott and, and Kelly Cordes, Cordes Junction. I mean, yes. his family has been here a really long yes, time. And I, it's by donation only. And I'll be standing at the door with my little shotgun to just make sure maybe there's a donation yeah, or two. Upturned hat, you know, or <laughs> pass the hat around there. Yeah, that is tonight. That Kelly will be Cordes. fabulous. Yeah. He's so interesting. And he's worked for the Prescott School System. Oh, forever. his whole career, I yes, think, just yes, about. Yeah, yes. absolutely. All right. Well, other things that are coming up at Charlotte Hall Museum is the Frontier Christmas on December 4th. Yes. And that's always a lot of yes. fun. Uh, um, and very, very well done. Very well yes. done. Yes. And as you can see there, it's from 6 to 830. That's the courthouse lighting too, isn't it? Well, it is. But, yeah. but People usually go over there at, right after the court. Yes, the that's what I do. Yeah. And uh, tickets are $5, but you get a $5 discount if you're a member. In other words, it's free if yes. you're a member. Yes. Yes. And then also at Charlotte Hall coming up on the 9th, I believe we got that. Oh, oh yes. yes. There it is. A Frontier Christmas Carol. And this is supposed to be a really exciting event. It kind of takes the old Charles Dickens thing kind of. Uh, there are not so many tickets left on that. Uh, it's 25 bucks or five bucks off if you're a member, $20. Right. And you, you do need to get your tickets for that if you're going to do that. Well, and it's a way to celebrate Christmas as people did back in the day. Yes, that's true. Yeah, especially, and there yeah. were many people who miners and ranchers who came into town during that time because oh, yes, it indeed. was one of the few times that they saw people that they didn't work with. Yes, indeed. So, and yeah. the and the people of Pre because there weren't a whole lot of hotels, certainly, yeah. you know, it's just a grass and two blankets, sure. but people would open up their houses Absolutely. to these miners who hadn't bathed or anything oh, yeah. you know well, and their greatest christmas gift was a homemade meal i'm oh, sure oh yeah. absolutely yeah, absolutely yeah. yeah all right now on it at the western heritage center on december 4th that same december 4th from noon to five we have this multiple author book signing event I'm very excited about this it's a great way to get personalized holiday gifts we're going to have Parker Anderson, Nancy Burgess, Brad Courtney, Drew Desmond, who's he? Kathy Lopez, <laughs> Stuart Rosebrook, and Darlene Wilson, and Jeff Smith, the uh, descendant of Soapy. Yes. Soapy and I Smith. want to meet him because I've been to Skagway, and somewhere I have a, a, a piece of that. Uh, uh, oh, come on. This is surgery last year yeah. of, of soap. Uh, no, and he had he a he had a, a dollar or five dollars in it, and he had somebody in the in the group who came around uh, to see what Soapy Smith had to sell. Oh my gosh! Look what I he worked for Soapy. Yeah, that's right. So he's a I'm shield. very interested to meet this person. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. been to Skagway be and know all about Mr. Soapy. Uh huh. Yeah, uh -huh. That's right. <laughs> and Darlene Wilson too. She does the uh, haunted Prescott tours, and yes. she has her book that she co-authored with Parker. Yeah. So there's going to be like thirteen different books to yes, choose from yes. you can say to my dear so and so merry christmas or whatever you want to put on it there uh so that is an exciting event absolutely and then on december 10th is acker night and at the western heritage center we will have the rusty pistols reloaded yes, yes. don't have a uh, slide for that but 8 5 30 to 8 30 acker night be sure to drop on into and acker night is heritage. so wonderful because there are musicians everywhere and they're all volunteering their time. Oh, yeah. And Mr. Acker wasn't the nicest person. 
person in the world. That's my true. auntie told me, he had a store over on Cortez. Yep. My auntie told me that if she went in there to buy school supplies or something, at the door, she had to show him that she had money. No, yeah, he was, he was renowned for that. <laughs> if a couple of kids wanted to go into his store and one of them had money, right. the friend who didn't had to wait outside. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, you know, we look at Acker as, you know, the big benefactor, but yeah, he was kind well, of a sourpuss. He was, back in but the day. personally, maybe he had a tough time. Well, that's true. Yeah. He did indeed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. He also got into real estate, had his house dynamited. Uh, but You yeah. know why he got into real estate? Because it was the depression and people weren't able to keep. Oh, don't oh, get me started. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, we lost part of what would have been Acker Park yeah. because of property taxes on right. stuff that he owned there. Right, and and right. that's kind of why we have Acker Night, because some of those lots were just sitting there unadjacent. And right. yeah. that's why we have Acker Night, because yep. we yep. couldn't do that for the park. All right. Yep. <laughs> well, we certainly appreciate having you here. Don't forget the Prescott, hashtag Prescott AZ blog, over 260 articles. I think we're over 635,000 reads as we're moving towards two thirds of a wow. million reads. Wow. Wow. The Facebook page celebrating historic Prescott group and on Insta, Twitter, and Pinterest. The IDs are all the same at Prescott AZ History. Now, whenever you want to, I will show you where the old road was from Jerome to Camp Verde up through uh, Jackass Flats, which people call Prescott, Prescott Valley. Valley. No, it's a plateau. Oh, yeah, and, okay. and, and down Bullwacker Hill, that old road is still there. If they had made the road you were showing at that one time. Yeah. My great great uncle would have been a millionaire because he had the first claims of copper in Jerome. And no, I oh don't know where the my. My, my, mine is, and no, I don't have any money from it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> none of the miners ended it. That's why they had the pioneers home. <laughs> exactly. They dig it out and exactly. put it back into the exactly. dirt. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. The next Drew Desmond show is scheduled for December 15th. We hope to see you then and have a historic day, everybody. Thanks for watching. Uh -huh.